morning gardeners of the internet. Welcome to another crazy gardening hair day in my garden and today I'm going to show you a few cool things that has been happening around my place. I've got a few projects that I'm excited about and it's rainy, overcast, windy and our first mango flowers are fun. Oh, I took some photos and some video the other day of our gorgeous mango flowers and it was sunny and beautiful and I was getting all my hopes up and all of this beautiful promise here, all these gorgeous flowers, they just look so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And each one of those could have just been laden in beautiful R2E2s but now it's rainy and it's overcast and our mangoes they get a disease and it's called anthracnose. It's a fungus and it looks like that and it'll get worse and it'll go black and our flowers will all drop off and then we'll have to wait for the second flowering and fingers crossed, we might actually get some mangoes. They have some baby broccoli here. It's getting all little baby broccoli down the side, which is pretty cool. But to be honest, I don't think I will grow these again because to me, that's a fair bit of space for a few tiny bits of broccoli. Um, but you know, it's always nice to try a variety and, and see, see whether it's worth it. You know, a little bit of a novelty. That actually looks quite cute. Uh, but you know, like we, we would cook that up and eat it all in one sitting. So to me, if I can get a big head of broccoli, I'm gonna prefer that but you know good job good cute job all of our lettuce is starting to go to seed because uh, it's got warm now during the day but these because they're growing in such rich material they're not bitter we've been eating them and these sunflowers are incredible check them out there's some down here too you know you're getting an awesome display when you've got all these side shoots they're all going to be flowers including that one there's some more and my hmm, my cabbages i'll have to wait and see whether they're gonna head up because it's getting warm but they feel a little bit firm they'll only be little i'm gonna take off some of these bigger leaves because of course they're crowding into my chilies um i left that one damaged to try and breed up some of the the good the good bugs the good population getting a little bit of damage here but otherwise they look good I have got some nets to throw over them, but because I mixed them in with all this, they probably get in anyway. And to be honest, they probably already hatched. So if I, oh, pardon me, shush, shush. If I put a net over it, I'd probably just trap all the bugs in. And then the little birds couldn't come and eat all the caterpillars. A bit more going on here. That one's starting to firm up. Hmm, but that just looks awesome doesn't it like check it out especially against the mango tree all those flowers just look so cool look look that's caterpillar turds you see some caterpillar turds hmm because they're on the beans they're eating the beans looks like a birdie's already got them good birdies good birdies all right, well, I didn't pick the beans. They're too little. You have to, here. Look, here's one you can share. Goodness me. Are we ever going to get any beans? Are you ready? Sit. Sit. I picked my first sex pest off the tomatoes this year. It's starting to warm up, which means we get the little stink bugs that come along and and um, get a room all over our tomatoes and make little bites and stuff and stings and they wreck just under the skin. So I flicked one of those off. It's wet today, so I can't see any, but usually the only thing I know how to do to get rid of them that's not like a chemical-based thing because I'm not into that is to just hose them off or flick them off. But I'll tell you what, they when it warms up, they're relentless and they just go for gold on your tomatoes. So I've got some nets to put over my other tomatoes in the new garden that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, these ones I probably won't worry about because they'll ripen up and I'll probably have them off before long. These are the Italian, what are they? Italian heritage tomato. So 
I mean, they're pretty cool, but I wouldn't grow them again. That's just my preference because I like my tomato bushes to be huge and full of tomatoes. And even though these are little and full of tomatoes, that's pretty much looks like all they're going to give me. So I'm thinking some people would say that they're good for a patio pot, but I'm thinking if I had only a patio and just a pot, I'd have a tomato that you could just keep growing and growing and growing like the indeterminate varieties. Um, but you know what? These are cute. They've actually got, you know, a reasonable size tomato on them. Um, I'm sure they'll be de delicious on sandwiches. Um, but you know, like if you wanted to save your tomatoes in a pulp, which is what I do, these wouldn't really be worth it. it wouldn't be worth growing. But you know, I've got 11 different varieties of tomatoes in, so I'm actually thinking these are pretty cool. But if they were the only tomatoes I'd had in, I'd be disappointed. But that's not their fault. Look at these beautiful beans. Purple variety, bush bean. They, they're just going to be loaded. Gorgeous. These are yellow variety bean. I planted them really early and really close. And they have just started to take off really well now because it's warm. I've given them some extra trellis to grow on. But we're getting them. I'm picking them too quickly though because we all love to munch them. And, but, you know, now that it's warm, they will just pack on even more. I planted some of my old pea seeds in here and it's really too late for peas because as I'll show you in a minute, uh, it gets too hot and they hate it. And then they'd stop producing and then you just gotta plow them in. But because these were my peas last year from a, a mammoth pea, they just produce a really, really, really long, long, vine and they just keep producing and producing and producing but because I didn't store these seeds properly I wanted some to come up and hopefully get some pods on them and then I can save those for next year but I'll also plant in some cucumbers here because I have some ready to go again my little cabbages you cute little cabbages uh but yeah look at these bloody moths cruising brown laying their eggs you know just living their life so, you know they'll breed up the good pests for me too I'm still eating all the leaves and everything off them so it doesn't really bother me the radishes it's um too hot they like it cool so they probably won't bulb up it doesn't matter either dill they'll be great for our cucumber pickling i want to show you something cool i broke my shovel and it's one of those awesome old cyclone shovels and it got a split so um cyclone is the brand i saw them brand new the other day and they're 80 dollars and they look spectacular they're so gorgeous and really really beautiful new design that isn't blue and the handles all you know lacquered but anyway i love fixing my old tools and this is an awesome shovel and now it will last me another 10 or 15 years and i got my old previous neighbor to take out the other bit and he actually put a new bolt in it for me which is cool it's got a big split down here but you know what this will just keep going and going and going excellent brand so i mowed the lawn through here it was getting long enough to to mow and get me enough to put in the top of my compost i had a few bugs flying around in there and i just wanted to chop them off so they're capped now and now I just wait for the next lot of stuff to get chucked on top here I've got sunflowers that i planted next to the garden and they're surprisingly doing well considering i keep standing on them but i mean they're getting little flowers it was amazing that they just sort of stopped there I didn't really think this through. I mean, I did, but then I didn't because I thought I'd have two poles here of bamboo so I could have a trellis at the back for those back tomatoes and then I could do something to support the front. But because there's some massive rocks there, I couldn't get the star picket down to put my bamboo over and then put the line up. So at the moment, I've just got a couple of dodgy aluminium things that were off a door frame. And these other ones, I'm just gonna go and cut some more bamboo and make some stakes to pop them in. Get our lettuce, these little gorgeous, I think they might be a butter crunch or something like that. They are amazing and delicious. And they're nicely shaded. 
The only thing is the tomatoes, they like a deep watering every few days, whereas these guys like to be watered all the time. So I've just been getting the watering can and giving them top up every morning and make sure they're right. These are the Sunny Boys and check them out. Look at those stalks. So they're doing exceptionally well. I've got some flowers on them too, so I'll give them a little dose of organic phosphorus to kick that flower setting in and get some fruit set. But yeah, look at that new growth and the colour. It's just amazing. Check out this lettuce. Yum. All right, we've got our kohlrabi. They're getting to a good size. Beetroot, spinach. Um, I planted some rocket in here yesterday because I caught a little grub cruising around and eating my spinach. So I just chucked him into the rocks. He can fend for himself. Thyme taken off. Some other flowers and things. Um, Thanks my lucky stars. I was hoping this was one of the pumpkin vines that all the seeds got mixed up and it looks like I'm right. And that one there. So I'm pretty sure they're a Big Max. They will spread off there. That's part of the old pumpkin. So I'm going to pull that out because I don't want the any disease to transfer onto these. Our capsicums or Makani chilies, the big banana ones. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is a sign of good, good soil. Beautiful. Okie doke, seedlings. All right, they are ox hearts, brandy wines, mm. <laughs> sage, sage, lettuce, wax gourds, wax gourds, wax gourds, uh, pickling cucumbers, <laughs> is random tomato, what's that meant to be? Sunflower, hmm, all right, so none of those came up. Um, rocket, Chinese broccoli, something, 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 more cucumbers, that should have been corn, didn't come up. Clendulas, okra, Chinese cabbage, cucumbers have already gone in, and some herbs left over. Uh, I scored some, some cheapies, love the cheapies. Lemon verbena, artichoke, some more dill to go with the cucumbers, and what's that? Oh, wasabi, I haven't grown wasabi before to see how that goes all right our peas so peas and carrots beans and I'm actually going to take those out and these once these pods form their seeds and I can keep them so I'll probably actually leave those there these ones so you can see that's what summer does or oh, spring peas don't like hot weather so these are ready to get laid down on the ground They'd be great mulch. Haven't decided what I'm going to put here yet. Now, check out these things. These are the tomato tropics. And look at that taken off. I've just started to just gently tie them to the trellis. I've got beans growing up through here as well, which is awesome. Sunflower. I've been chopping off the lettuce, which you can see that was the lettuce. This is a bit of um, Italian parsley. This is a, what is that? It's not a lettuce. Oh, it's calendula. So I've got other lettuces here that need to come out. And that one's got a little grub on it somewhere because I can see the turds all inside there. Um, you can see I've been chopping them out. I just leave the roots in there because they do their own thing. They're awesome. Leave them there. There's a bean. Lettuce. We've got so much lettuce right now. It's bloody $20 a head, but we've got it just like laying down on the ground. So tomatoes, these tropic tomatoes are F1 hybrid and they are prolific producers because that's their job. And I've not grown them before, so I'm going to see how they go. I don't like tomatoes from the store because they're rock hard and tasteless, um, but that's because they're picked green and grown fast and they want to be able to sit them on the shelf for a while. So these ones, even though they're the same variety, they are going to be ripened on the vine, so they could actually taste amazing. And I hope so, because I've got heaps of them. And then I had 20 seedlings left over that I'd repotted and they were huge and they got gifted to friends. 
I have one in here that's a lettuce leaf basil and it seems to be the only variety that's resistant to that horrid fungus that I bought home from the hardware store ones so fingers crossed and I'll be able to get seed off that and I will start prolifically growing it everywhere hopefully when should you come over to my new garden right people behold <laughs> okay it's not that it's not that awesome but i think it's awesome um right where are you two going yeah. all right this is our awesome garden this is the pot garden that i started last year for potatoes ended up growing rosellas and this year i've put on another bale of hay a round bale and two loads of port and i've got uh, another lot of the tomato tropics in they went in two weeks ago and look at them they're absolutely powering i've got a big max pumpkin i've got basil up here that will hopefully do all right um these are also the mix of uh yellow and black zucchinis and some autumn pumpkins that the seeds got mixed up and then they all just went in i thought well we'll just find out won't we if you can see all these little gumballs everywhere, these beautiful blue gumballs, these are off our Kwandong tree, so we've got a stand out the front. And you usually absolutely chock a block full of lorikeets when these are on, but we haven't seen lorikeets for two years, so don't know what's happening there. Just mind my own business, they can do whatever they want, but usually we don't have any of those left over because they're all getting munched on. I'm guessing this is the yellow zucchini yellow squash uh, because that's an amazing flower and that's sort of a little squash size squash shape i mean but yeah they're all looking really good and they've got heaps of new growth on them uh, that one got snapped off by the dogs running through but it looks like it's going to do its own thing anyway and there's another one beautiful so that's a female flower because it's got the fruit on it and Let's see, this also is a female flower because it's got the fruit on the bottom and it's got the big open receptive pollinator space, but we don't have any male flowers, so we're not gonna get any. Those ones won't mature. So that's cool, they're still babies, give them time. All right, Chinese cabbage, the first lot I've put in, um, they doubled in size within two days, but that's just the, the warm weather. And these are mini munch, I think they're mini munch, they might be pickle cucumbers, but either way, they're in the ground now. And they're gonna grow up my awesome trellis that I put up. It's, this is two me three meters tall, this pole. Um, and this is dog wire fence that I got an old, off an old farmer in Bamoya uh, for awesome price. And um, the rest of it's gonna be used for the pig pen. Um, I've pretty much got it all secured up the top there, but down this end I can't quite reach, so I'll have to either back a ute up into there or I don't like the idea of leaning a ladder on that, but anyway, we'll figure it out. But yeah, over here I'm going to grow corn at the back. Here are where the brandy wines are going to go, and I'm just deciding up here whether I'm going to do more cucumbers or more tomatoes or more of something else that's climbing maybe more beans but I do like planting my beans in amongst the tomatoes because the beans love it as well so anyway if you got any suggestions happy to hear them now our little bushel gourds that we've I put in last week they actually had some powdery mildew and I gave them a spray I just tried the spray with the the what was it bicarb soda spray that was suggested I don't think I'd do that again I actually don't like what happened there and I think I'll just stick with the powdered milk or even just milk that deals with it but anyway that's its little watering can and then I fill that up and change it over to these ones and eventually we'll get enough rain that they'll just keep going on their own. This one's actually chock-a-block full of male flowers. 
but no female flowers. But they're from the same family as the squash or pumpkins and that kind of thing. So that will actually pollinate that other fruit. But it won't affect the fruit that you get, but it will change the seeds that you get. So you wouldn't go planting those seeds because they would be half a bushel gourd and half a squash. That would be quite weird. Where did they go? Get in here! Come on! Here! Good girl! Good girl! Come on! Good girl! Come on! Wallace? Some stinky pest been in our driveway. Come on! Good boy! Good boy! Come on! Quicker! Quick! Quick, 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 quick! Oh, it's a racing dog! He's a racing dog! <laughs> Good puppies! Good puppies! Hey, when no one's around to distract you, they're the best puppies. Oh, there's an awesome place up in Rocky that does grease, and they do grease by the goon bag, the massive thousand kilo goon bag of grease, and their cardboard is great because it's clean mostly, you know, what's a bit of grease. And this thick, so in here we had, um, well, there's still some here that I've missed. So this is Camp for Laurel. It's actually a pest and I'm just cutting out all the, the saplings that have come up. It's a bit more than a sapling, but anyway. So I've, been, I've trimmed them all out here and cleaned this up and, but I didn't poison the, the bits that I cut off. Uh, so they could sprout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down because that's super thick. And then I'm just going to put mulch over top of that. I did pick up, well, I did go to pick up a, a load of dump mulch yesterday. But again, after two months, their loader is still broken. So you can just rely on council to, to not give a fuck. So I want to show you what cool stuff's happening up here. You've already seen that I've started my pig fence. I've got the corners in and the gate posts. And I've been up here cleaning up this row, hoping that we'd get mangoes, but you know, it's rain. So we'll wait another month to see with the, the next lot of flowers, second flowering and see if they come good. So you can see I've got a stack of cardboard here from the same place where I got the other big thick cardboard. Um, I pretty much, well, this one I went and got with the ute because I wanted the bigger stuff and the stuff down the front, which I'll show you in a minute with the pumpkins. I just picked that up in the back of the car. And what I've done, so I've planted some trees here. I've got this fig, which I scored for 20 bucks down from 30. And look, obviously it's loving it. I only plant in a tiny little hole here because all of this has been just under grass like this for years and what that means is that it's built up a lot of soil uh, the grass just lays down lays down lays down gets composted basically feeds the soil grows the soil it's that simple so what i did because this year i mowed there and i also wanted all the grass for mulch and so that's that pile down at the other garden the pot garden that you could have seen down there and here um <laughs> actually now i need it so I've got a little bit more up here. I'm going to mow and get this onto the cardboard. So what I've done here is I've planted a few different trees in amongst the old, the old lychees. They're a pink lychee. Variety doesn't do particularly well here. Uh, I think I've seen three fruit on them in 16 years. The trees don't grow big. They haven't done exceptionally well, but I'm not going to rip them out. They can stay there. That's fine. But this is going to be a food corridor, so all these fruit trees all along down here. Because I've got lots of rocks in this row, I'm not going to be mowing through this row, so I'm just going to keep it as a bit of a garden bed. I will actually let this grass keep growing back, and every now and again I will mow it down and put it on top of this garden. Um, this now will stop weeds coming through around my trees and I'll just keep mulching and mulching and mulching and as it breaks down I'm going to plant things in here like ginger and other um, you know annual 
plants, like maybe eggplant and all that sort of stuff, so I can just come through here and harvest. And if something eats it, something eats it. If something doesn't eat it, then we'll eat it. But yeah, pomegranate, mulberry, fig. I've got some other fruit trees that I want to put in here. I've got an, actually another pomegranate that I'm going to plant down in that space. And I've also got dragon fruits that are going to go in on those leftover stumps from the wattle. So this stuff isn't rocket science, it's just work. Lots of people turn it into rocket science with their super science brains and they look at all the soil bacteria and microbes and all that stuff and that is pretty cool when you geek out on it. There's lots of really interesting things happening in nature and it's also why I love, love, love having just this mess around the property because this is all my biodiversity. This is why I can have a garden that isn't just completely sprayed all the time because I'm producing beneficial bugs, um, beautiful soil bacteria and everything all in these spaces here and that does convert across into my little veggie garden. So if you want to be organic or biodynamic or all the other fancy words, uh, you're going to have to have a space like this because you cannot mow down every blade of grass to within an inch of its life or you can't have every tree perfectly pruned and not have anywhere for your beneficial insects to grow and thrive. Um, you, can, you have to have buffer zones for those sort of things to grow. And that's just, that's just the nature of it. That's just how it works. Otherwise, if you're seeing an organic farm that has, you know, perfectly mowed lawns, perfectly pruned trees, you know they're doing something like smashing pyrethrum and killing all their beneficial insects as well as all the other non-beneficial insects, which, you know, can benefit somewhere in the cycle, you know? Everything's got to eat, hasn't it? So anyway ranting so this strip here all of this strip here will be supported by all of the mess in here although that'll be a pig pen but that'll breed its own insects too and on the other side of the pig pen will be another little nature's corridor where things will grow and thrive and all of our tiny little birds will be in there so they can flutter over to the veggie garden and eat all my grubs see it's not rocket science <laughs> so here's some of it just fluffing by here now. Look at it. That butterfly. That's gonna go sit on one of my sunflowers. It's gonna lay a, a little clutch of eggs that are gonna smash the leaves. But that's not gonna stop the seeds from growing, is it? Chooks are still gonna enjoy them. Oh, what do you got? You got a prickle. Hey?